Back. Today I'm back in FreeCodeCamp doing the new responsive web design certificate and if you remember from previous videos we've been doing the learn HTML by building a cat photo app and then also we've learned basic CSS by building a cafe menu. Um, so the next course and what will be this playlist is learn CSS colors by building a set of colored markers. So let's open this up and basically selecting the current colors for your web page can greatly improve the aesthetic appeal to your readers. In this course, you'll build a set of colored markers. You'll learn different ways to set color values and how to pair colors with each other. Um, and as you might have seen with the, the CSS, the menu, um, colors really change the web page um, and sort of, yeah, really um, help certainly within design, um, particularly related to front end. So, you know, front end, um, let's say website design, um, it's a really good skill to have, and this will just be the foundation of, of colors. So let's see, here's gonna be a preview, and you can see it's just three simple markers with uh, red to green, blue, um, and then, that, yeah, we'll um, see how they go about learn teaching this, I guess. So let's start coding. So step one, as you've seen in the previous project, web pages start with a doc type HTML. Um, so we just need to do doc, oops, so we want to, sorry, open up a HTML element, doc type and that's html lowercase and then and an html element after that so let's do html and then if you remember we want to close off html like so and then the lang is equal to en like that and i believe that will be correct and then within here we'll type all of our html so let's check that code uh, Okay, uh, I think it's actually an exclamation mark doc type. There you go. So um, yeah, kind of a, a bit of a, a, not a trick question, but yeah, it's an exclamation, part, exclamation point doc type HTML within a, a tag here. And that is then the correct syntax to indicate that this file is a HTML file. So let's submit and go to the next challenge. So step two, nest a head element within the HTML element so we'll just do head oops, like so and close off that head tag and then just after the head tag add a body element so like that there we go so step three remember that the title element gives search engines extra information about the page it also tells browsers what text to display in the title bar when the page is open and on the tab um, for the page so within the head element, we want title and the text content of that. So title to close it off. And if I just go back in, it will be colored markers like so. Let's check that. Perfect. And next challenge. Number four. Oops. Let me just ask me later for now. So step four, to tell browsers how to encode characters on your page, set the char set to UTF-8. Um, it's a universal character set that includes almost every character from all human languages and that's inside the head tag so we'll do a, a meta tag and like that uh, and actually sorry the meta tags are self-closing um, so sometimes I forget that so that's like that and then I believe char set will just equal utf-8 and we want to close off that string there and there we go, perfect. So step five, again, in our setup, we're gonna add another self-closing meta tag. So let's do um, meta like that. And then back within here, we want to give the uh, give it a name, attribute equals viewport, and then content uh, will be equal to this string here. So width is device width, and initial scale is 1.0. And essentially, as they're saying here, it just means that the content will look the same on all devices. Um, again, normally this is kind of set by, let's say, your framework or um, sort of whatever, I guess, sort of library, or, as I said, or framework you're using. You don't normally have to worry about too many of these initial meta tags. But let's go to the next step. So number six, now you're ready to start adding content to the page. Within the body, nest a H1 element. So create the H1. And the text is CSS color markers, like so. And there we go, we can see our H1 on the page. 
Step seven, in this project, we're gonna work with an external CSS file to style the page. Um, and we can see that over here. But before you can use it, you need to link it to the page. So we need these two pages, um, or sorry, documents to link um, between themselves. And just by clicking on them, um, they open or close. So we want to then, in the head tag, so that's where all the information regarding the title, the metadata, and then linking any other files, we're gonna link, and I'm not sure if this is self-closing, so I'm gonna assume it's not for now, like that. And then within the link tag, but not within sort of where you might be able to type text, it's within sort of the opening link tag. Um, we give it a rel attribute, and that'll be style sheet. And then the href is set to styles.css. And essentially it's referencing this style sheet here. Let's see if the link is self-closing or not. So yeah, it looks like you can um, have it like this. So this should be step eight. Now that your external CSS file is set up, um, and obviously they're linked between the two now, we can start styling the page. So as a reminder, here's how to target a paragraph element and align it to the right. So we're selecting the P element with just the P. We've got curly braces to open up. We've got a property of text align. And then on the right hand side of that is the value. And in this instance, it's right. So text align for all paragraph tags within the HTML file will align right. So we just want to create a new CSS rule that targets the H1 element and set its text align property to center. So what I'm gonna do is actually just copy all of this, go over here and oh, just need to open up the style page. So let me close down, there we go, the index.html. And what do we want to do? We want to target the H1 and we'll text align. And you can see here, it's now on the right side of the page and we just want it to be center. And there you go, it's centered um, sort of horizontally across the page there. Cool, so let's submit and go to the next challenge. So step nine, now that you'll add some elements, um, that you'll eventually style into color markers. Um, so first within the body, add a div element and then set its class attribute to container and make sure the div is below the H1. So we'll do div over here. And if you remember, we need to close that off and we need to give it a class of, and then the name will be container like that. And we can check that code. Perfect. Then I think finally for this video, step 10, next within the div, add another div and give it a class name of marker. So we'll just do the, exactly the same thing and we'll give this first one a class and that will be a marker like so. And we'll check that and that's all passed. So that should be it there and we're on to step 11. So I'll continue this on the next video. I hope you found that useful and look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.